Hello and welcome to the Big Arsenal Discussion. I'm your host, Giles, and joining me today are regulars Amanda from the Guna Girls Podcast, Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV, and Arsenal Fan TV regular Mo Hader. All right, guys, let's talk transfers. We've had, we've seen two come, well, three, if you include the young striker from Czech Republic, it's Gracious, or whatever his name is. But the, the two, I suppose, most talked about transfers have been Christian Biliak and Gabriel Paulista. Gabe. Gabe. Gabby, James, and, um, Gabby. Paul. Yeah. Gabby, yeah, Gabby, Paulie, Gabby, Paulie, Paulie. Yeah. Paulie. I like Paulie. Yo, Paulie. <laughs> All right, so, um, Robbie, start with you. What do you, what do you make of these transfers? You think Wenger's gone out and done exactly what he should have done? Like he said he was going to do in October when we went to the AGM. Yeah. He said he was going to go out and be a defender. Got a defender. Got a defensive midfielder. Although relatively young. Are you happy? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy that we got um, Paul Easter. In particular, I mean, we needed, we definitely needed that backup defence. That's been the problem since the start of the season. That we've not went into the season, we sold for Marlon and didn't replace him. And we paid the price, really. You know, we've had to put Monreal in there. He's had to develop into that position. Debucci in there. You know, we should have had that player in place in the summer. But I'm glad that he's addressed that now. I don't, I have to be honest with you, I don't know a lot about Paul Easter. Just bits and bobs that I've seen of him, but he does come um, highly rated from um, La Liga. Um, they, they really rate him there. Uh, I was reading with Villarreal. Um, they had uh, Godin there before he went to um, Atletico Madrid, and Godin to me is one of the best defenders in the world. And they were saying that this guy is the guy to replace Godin. Um, they, they really had high hopes for him replacing Godin. And I think the fact that Arson's gone there and he's looked at him and he's not even a Brazilian international and he's thinking, yeah, this guy is he, 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he he's 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 very quick, um, he's very strong, rugged. He should um suit the Premier League, he should fit in very quickly. And I am I'm, I'm pretty excited to, to see him play and to see how he gets on alongside um even Mertesacker or Kashoni. And I, I think that's a really good signing. The Bielek one, he's a young kid and I don't think we'll see much of Bielek. He's, he's, he's only, been fast-tracked to diversity. He's been fast-tracked, but he, he's not fit yet. He's, he's still got to get fit. And I still think, you know, I, I, I listened to um, his manager, who's Henningberg, who used to be his manager um, when he's playing there for Legia Warsaw. And he said in an interview that, you know, he's an up-and-coming player. He's still very raw. He's still got a lot to learn. So I don't think we'll see... We'll see Lots of him between now and the end of the season because he's still a very young player. Um, but I'm happy with those two signings. I would have loved to have seen still a defensive midfielder come in. I really would. Um, somebody like a Schneidley. And I know it's really hard to get these deals done in January. January yeah. But somebody like that to come in. But then I suppose Cochlean mm. has kind of... Mm -hmm. Solve that problem a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You were just about to say it, weren't you? Cochlear is a new <laughs> signing. And we, we hate hearing that, but you know maybe he could be. But I, I still have reservations as to whether he's going to be able to do it week in, week out. Hopefully he will. But in terms of the other signings that we've made, for me, the way I'm viewing it, we've only made one signing. Bielik is not a uh, player that should be coming into our first team squad and us relying on him. He's got no English football experience. He's very, very young. No six games. You know, it, it's just, yeah, mm. he's hardly got any real first team experience, never mind Premier League experience, which is one of the toughest leagues in the world. But at least uh, he is, you know, someone that should be able to come to the squad and do a job straight away. But as far as far as I'm concerned, Bielik is a gamble. It, it, he's just either going to crash and burn or he's going to be an absolute snip and we're going to look back in years to come and say what a great signing that was. At two minutes it's a gamble that you exactly. can take. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. With the astronomical sums in football these days, that is definitely a gamble worth taking if Arzaman had seen something with him because Let's face it, he's got an eye for it. So, and he's not um, paying him eight grand a week. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, as I'm saying, in my book, we've only signed one player. With Paul Easter, I'm not going to be one of them people that claims to have uh, uh, kind of encyclopedic knowledge of him because we've signed him and I've seen a YouTube compilation and looked at him on FIFA and Football Manager. I don't know enough <laughs> about the bloke, quite simply, but I have heard very promising reports about him from whatever I've read or whoever I've spoken to that, um, has discussed him but you know for me it's kind of like that one uh, picture has gone round all of Arsenal Twitter and that is his interceptions in La Liga you know we're, I think we're trying to find every single reason to believe in him and rightly <laughs> so you know he's a gooner now I just hope that he's that sort of 
defender. He's got Keown's number. He's, he's got number five. I hope he's that sort of defender that is just a nasty piece of work because I think that's what we need. Arsene Wenger signed Laurent Koscielny from absolutely nowhere. And for me, he is world-class now. He is an absolutely superb defender. If you want to watch a flawless performance, watch the first half of that Brighton game. Laurent Koscielny, pass completion must have been 100%. He did not put a single foot wrong in that first half. I know it's only Brighton. But Arsene Wenger found a player and has developed him into something absolutely superb. And I'm hoping he can do the same with Paul Easter now. Amanda, what's your thoughts? Do you share their views? Or? I do. I do share their view. I I don't know anything about him. I know he's from Villarreal. Um, <laughs> they were sad to see him go. He got a lovely send-off mm. and he's coming to us. There's not much else to say, really. We haven't seen him yet. Mm. Um, is he fit? Can he put, Can he walk straight into the first team squad? He'll actually come from Villarreal as well. Oh, dear. <laughs> or Seville. <laughs> or was it Seville? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> I just think it, it's always a risk. He was highly rated as well. <laughs> I think it's always a risk with foreign players, whether they can do it in the Premier mm. League or not. We, mm. we can't say anything. We just welcome him into our club. Yeah. And also... Oh, but also, and just another quick one, there's been some great defenders that when they first come into the Premier League, they have been shockingly bad. Yap Stam is, is the number one on that list. So we have to give Paul Easter a bit of time as well. And if you remember, you mentioned it before, actually, G, um, when Koscielny first came in, he was extremely rash. He, I remember him giving away a lot of penalties. I used to be kind of on the edge of my seat, holding my breath when <coughs> he was marking someone in the area if they had the ball, because he had that tendency to dive in. It will take Paul Easter a while to get used to the league, and I just hope that he he will come through it. You know, like Yap Stam did, for example, to to go on to be a great. But I'm curious as to is this Murtasaka's long term replacement? Because Murtasaka he's improved recently actually, but he, there was a World Cup hangover and a lot of questions were asked of him. And I'm just wondering, you know, is because he's quite young, Paul Easter. He's 24, I think. Mm. So is is he being lined up as Murtasaka's well, replacement? Hope so. I hope so. But to be honest, I hope so because. You know, for me, Mercus Mercus is at the stage now. We should be he should be third choice in my book. I think mm. I think we get into the stage now where we need to be looking to but to have somebody. Well, there's competition. At least there's yeah. competition. Mm. Um, they both know that they're not just going to walk into the team, and that's good. That's we what we want. To. That's we what we want. To. This topic might be a bit controversial, right? And you might agree with me or might not. But in terms of the three centre backs that we used to have, Koscielny, Van Milan, and Mertesacker, if I had to play one centre back by himself at the back, it would have been Van Milan. I think he had that better balance of aerial ability and uh, assertiveness and pace that uh, Mertesacker and Koscielny have as a partnership. So it's interesting that I'm saying the best individual defender we actually sold, but the two that remained formed such a good partnership that we didn't miss him at all. So now the interesting thing is Paul Easter, is he, could, he might be a great defender and Koscielny might be a great defender, but unless they can strike that partnership, it's pointless yeah. because you need to feed off each other. Just how you have to do up, up top. You have two centre backs need to feed off each other. If he has got loads of pace but no aerial ability, you know, we need someone that can oh, do that Mertzaka job, but hopefully have the pace as well. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's an interesting yeah, one that's to interesting know whether point, he will I've, sit I've, with Koscielny yeah, well. I've always, I mean, you know, in the, in the months leading up to his transfer window, I've, 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 always, I've also said I hope that we get somebody in that can actually complement. Koscielny. Mm. is aggressive. Mm. You need somebody that's aware, that picks mm. up, sweeps up behind him, I think. Mm. But this yeah. guy's very sort of similar to Koscielny in that he's so. very aggressive. Mm. But then I think he's also and... similar to Vermont. Mm. So, but you might see a difference in defence because yeah. we've got a little bit of protection in front of them. Yeah. Remember this yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. so yeah. it's going to make, it, he could be coming in right at the right time to all yeah. to Palace, Maybe, to, yeah. couldn't yeah. he? Indeed. Indeed. But it's an interesting one because if he is too similar to Koscielny, if he is like Verm Island, Verm and Koscielny could never really play together. So, you know, I the jury's out and not everything will always follow the same pattern, mm. but I'm a little bit nervous because I haven't seen enough of Paul Easter, but I have heard that a lot, that he's very assertive, he's very much like Koscielny, whilst Mertzak is a bit more cultured and kind of will mop up a little bit more. So, we just got to wait and see, I guess. The other thing, Coquelin hasn't signed a new contract. Yet. It's contracts. That we know of. We don't well, know. Well, it's contracts up at the end of the season mm. and even at Pom. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Super news about Liverpool I was, coming in. Yeah, don't know what they're smoking over at Anfield. <laughs> Liverpool are interested in Borussia Dortmund. Apparently interested yeah. in him as well. Um, why would he go to Liverpool? Yeah. Interested in him. Why would he go to Liverpool? Why would he go to Dortmund? Why would he go to, Dortmund? Why would he go to Dortmund? Why would he go to final? I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm confident. I'm it's just not saying that you know. Champions League though, is it? It's it's a, a, he wants to play though. He wants to play. And the little bits and bobs that we've seen of Tuba at Pom. He looks yeah. a player. The Sanchez you know, came a player to us and we weren't in the Champions League. We, we had to qualify. Oh, come on now. Oh, look, we had to qualify. What, 17 years in a row? It's... But we had to qualify. It didn't mean we were through. I mean, he wasn't always, guaranteed. I think, it. I think with Chibarapo, from what I've heard from people, is that he wants more assurances that he's going to be seeing a lot 
more first team football than he did in the past. Mm. And now really, with Sonogo going out, and Sonogo and will be coming out. But he would at Liverpool, and he would at Dublin. So there's the difference, yeah. isn't it? So we might in this next six months or between now and the end of the season, he probably will be getting more chances to at least twenty minutes mm. here, thirty minutes there. Okay, well, I mean, one thing I don't get on the Cochrane contract. Uh, one thing I've never understood is during a season they say no, we'll wait till the end of the season. We don't want to disrupt the team. I don't understand. I don't understand that. Don't that doesn't register with me. You can just get him in a room, sort out the contract. Doesn't need to affect the team. That could. I think that will get done. No, the, 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 the original for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that yes, could, yeah. That could just yeah. be them telling mm. us that we don't know. It I think the Cockland deal will definitely get done. It has to get done. For me, it has to get done. It will be very frustrating for him to push on, only for us to lose it. If he loses, it, there'll be uproar. Can you imagine? Who'd have thought that? Eh, Cockland. The one DM that we've got, and he doesn't sign. A few weeks ago, get rid of him. Cockland, sign the team. Sign the team, indeed. All right. So that's been a big Arsenal discussion. What's your thoughts on the uh, on the Arsenal transfer window this January? Give us your comments. Leave leave them in the box below. Thank you and goodbye.